Hi, this is Dee Dee Pfeiffer, and you're listening to Pop Culture Addicts. Welcome to Pop Culture Addicts, the weekly show that brings you interviews and discussions with people in our pop culture world. You know, that means we get to talk more about movies, more music, more video games, and more. (laughs) Don't miss a week. You never know who's going to be our next guest. So, okay, addicts, are you ready for your pop culture fix? Welcome to Pop Culture Addicts. Our guest today is a longtime actress in the Hollywood movie and television scene. You've seen her in movies like Frankie and Johnny, Falling Down, and The All Nighter. You've seen her in TV shows like Sybil and now on ABC's hit, Big Sky. Please join us in welcoming Dee Dee Fiverr. Welcome to the show, Dee Dee. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for having me. How are you? Very good. First off, Dee Dee, I, I want to talk about your newest project, uh, Big Sky, a David E. Kelly project over on ABC. It's gotten uh, some pretty rave reviews. And back in May, I believe it was May of 2021, it was renewed due to the awesome response from the viewers. It was one of the smash hits on ABC. Uh, and everybody seems to be flocking to it and really enjoying it. But for those who have not caught on to the reasons why they should be watching the show, I was hoping that you would be able to tell us a little bit about it, maybe tell people about your character and why they should be watching Big Sky. Well, first of all, you got to watch Big Sky Thursday night, ABC 10 o'clock, plug, plug, to keep me employed. <laughs> Okay, let's just really call it for what it is. Mama needs a job. I'm 57, okay? There's not a lot of work out there for me. No, seriously, it's uh, David E. Kelly, who's my brother-in-law. It's funny saying David E. Kelly. David's show, everything he touches has just golden dust all over it. Um, This is a CJ Box series of books, stories, bestsellers that David and uh, company brought to uh, the TV screen. And two detectives who go out there and um, they're very colorful characters, textured, and they meet some crazy people in Montana. Um, If you haven't seen the show, this is a hard one to talk about because there's spoiler alerts almost on every darn episode. So your best thing to do is go to Hulu, binge the first season so you can get the flavor of the show, which is mm-hmm. this one you think you're going this way, our show takes you that way. You know, mm-hmm. just be think, oh, I love that character. Oh, they're dead, what? You know, we will <laughs> kill you, we will invite you onto our show and then we will kill you or you'll kill each other or something happens. And so don't think that, don't get too safe on your couch when you're watching Big Sky. Um, lots of diversity. You got some new actors, old actors. Um, I'm one of the older ones recycled. I play Denise Brisbane, the office manager. She is like the rock at the office at Doolin Hoyt. She don't ever go anywhere. She's like that one person, you know where to find her all the time. That's right. Because the girls, um, Jenny and um, Cassie are like these butterflies or detectives and they're out there getting into danger and doing things they're not supposed to do to save, you know, all the innocent people. And then the guest stars are always kind of very textured and you're not sure if you should like them or not. And just when you say, oh, that guy needs to go, you feel sorry for him. So it is really an emotionally charged, exciting, um, wild ride is big sky. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I love shows like that though. I love the, I know where this is going and we take a hard left. Like, but Girl, what? when I read the scripts, when I read the pilot, which I won't say in case you haven't watched it, when I read the pilot, when I got to the end, mm-hmm. I went, oh, that was a typo. That, that that didn't just happen. And I read it again. I said, what? What? I must be missing a page. Went back a page, read it again. Nope. Still reading the same thing. Called my manager. <laughs> Did I just read that right? He goes, I guess so. And I <laughs> and he was like, that's your brother-in-law. And I was like, what the heck is he doing? What was the audience going to think? What he just did in that end of the first episode right. of the first season, Hulu, catch it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's set, yeah, it sets up that the show is not predictable. And again, I love just when you think, oh, I know what's happening. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> oh, that's great. I absolutely love shows like that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I would rather watch a show that's going to keep me on my toes than a show that I go, well, I bet you I know what's going to happen in this episode. That guy's the killer. This, you know, you know, it's not yeah, much like, of a who done it if you know who done it in the first five well, minutes. And even in our show, say the audience knows who did it. The two girls don't. We don't, right? But you watch them get closer to it and how dangerous it is as they get closer to it. But then also all these layers 
of um of personality traits start to develop with the characters so yes. you get to know them better and i think this we have this one character who you just really don't want to like but then when you get to know him you kind of feel really bad for him and you're like oh well maybe he's but like, i don't want to like you <laughs> yeah like your mom's a whack job i guess i would be that way too if my you know so it's yeah i'm not gonna say anything more yes just I, I need to yeah, watch it. Uh, characters are smart but if you haven't noticed <laughs> Nice. Cool, Love it. But I, I look forward to that because there are shows that it's the, you watch it and you're like, I know there's going to be an explosion at the 30 minute mark because there's always an explosion at the 30 minute mark. And oh, that's I funny. Mean, the, no, 30 minute mark explosion. That's funny. <laughs> I don't <really>? even know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I watched all of Burn Notice when Burn Notice was on. And oh, I was it, on that, wasn't I? You were. Okay. Yeah, Almost <laughs> every episode, 30 minute mark, there's an explosion. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna have to go back and double check that because I've watched so many episodes of the burn notice. I don't think that I've ever really paid attention to that. Oh, I love that. She knows the formula though. It's like right? this is what I love, like, like in big sky, I got to tell you, um, <laughs> just when I think I got, I go, Oh yeah, I got this character. The, as, I'm, as I'm reading the script, I go, Oh, Whoa, where'd that come from? <laughs> so if they're surprising me, that's pretty cool. When, that you is know? really cool. And by the time the script gets rewritten and rewritten, and then we actually film it, I don't even sometimes recognize the episode. So it's often <laughs> fun for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, editing always does fun things. Oh, you betcha. And filters. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love them. So, I mean, Dee, I am, I know that this is, this is a dangerous, dangerous rabbit hole to start, but I know that you get the, oh, your last name's Pfeiffer. Are you Michelle Pfeiffer's sister? Mm -hmm. All the time. I mean, that's just. That's yeah. just part of having that name. But when I first started acting, they told me to change my name. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This was in the 80s because you didn't want to have the same last name as another actor who was already established. You were considered right. not serious. Oh. And I said, I'm not changing my last name. That's my birth given name. I was very stubborn. I, my dad called me hardhead. <laughs> <laughs> Dads um, have a way with words. Yeah. Yeah. No, I won't say that. <laughs> said, but yeah. Yeah, I get that a lot. I still get that, you know. But, um, you know, if I didn't have such an amazing relationship with my sister, it would be really hard. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you don't like your sister or you're jealous of her or you're competitive and everyone keeps throwing in it in your face that she's, right. so, but she's so talented. She's, you know, and then you'd be like, I hate her. I'm like, yeah, she's beautiful. Yes, she's talented. She's amazing. And she's an incredible person. Her heart is huge. That's she's awesome. so, yeah, and she's compassionate and she's just literally so special. Like my other sister, Lori, I got another sister, mm -hmm. you know, and then there's my brother, Rick. God bless him. He's got three, five, four sisters. Um, <laughs> he's, <silent. laughs> he's very quiet. <laughs> well, I'm sure he probably couldn't talk growing up. There was no room to talk. He sits there and shakes his head the minute the three. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's, it doesn't bother me except for when like I'm doing something and it's my like credit and they somehow go Michelle Pfeiffer, sister Dee Dee Pfeiffer, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what does she have to do with the fact that I did that magazine? I won't bring it up because I know this is a PG, but I did a magazine that was very adult mm -hmm. and all of a sudden her name was included in it. And I'm like, excuse me, <laughs> she had nothing to do with that. That was me. Right. right. It, it bugged me for like a minute. And then I'm thinking, you know, that's, that's you guys. That's not me. Cause I'm right. I might be super insecure about a lot of things. That's not one of them. It's like, that's good. You think having such a beautiful sister, remember I got another sister who's just as beautiful as Michelle. She's a brunette. One's older, one's younger. And I'm just like, Oh, I just gave up on trying to compete with them a long time ago when I was younger. Cause it just didn't make any sense. And we don't come from a competitive family. So <laughs> there was, I did, wasn't taught that. If anything, I'm really supportive of them. Well, that's and, good. Yeah, no, I love my sisters. That doesn't mean we don't fight or they well, say, no, well, no, 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 you're still siblings. not how siblings work. <laughs> well, I'm the crazy one. They're always trying to make me tame. And I'm like, you just need to stop that. Cause I'm not, I'm 57. Not Wild is crazy. It's a, it's a whack job and it's not going to change. <laughs> for some reason, <laughs> for some reason, I envision your, your brother, I believe you said his name was Rick. Yeah, I envision your brother doing this for the majority of his life when it's a family gathering. I but <laughs> yeah, but I just yeah. well, never mind. <laughs> Shell and Lori, my sisters are kind of they're not as I'm really the only crazy one in the family. Um, but when the three of us get together, uh, we're they're more animated around me than they would anybody else because they know me and, right. and they do 
want to jump in. They act, I just drove them to the airport this morning. They came to visit me for overnight for the Christmas. Oh, that's yeah, cool. my son and I and all these rescued animals in Albuquerque um, are here for the holiday. And so we're not going to see the family. So they came to see me. And it's funny because they came in for a night and then left. And it was like, well, that's not long at all. I'm like, it's good. Trust me. Because <laughs> it's almost like, I think when you spend too much time with your family, you're just asking for it. It's oh, a yeah, sure. of time, right? Before you're like, what did you say? I don't think I like that tone. What did you mean by that? You know, and oh, then yeah. he jumps in to try to mediate. You're like, why are you all up in my room? No, you're not, you know, uh, we don't ever fight. We just have intelligent conversations, you know? <laughs> and some, Love that. I, I can only imagine that sometimes those intelligent conversations get a little bit louder. <laughs> well, here's the thing. The coming to New Mexico, I tell them that, that we have some spirits. I'm in New Mexico. I believe in that paranormal stuff. Mm -hmm. sure. And of course, my sisters are like, Yes, Dee. I'm like, do not look at me like I'm crazy. I, I'm not the only one that bought the aliens and where they come from magazine at Sprouts down the street. And other people in the line looked at me and went, uh huh, it's a good issue. It's a good issue. I'm like, right? In LA, they would have institutionalized me for buying the magazine here. They're like, it's, that's a good issue. That aliens, ancient, yeah, that's a good issue. <laughs> I remember when uh, a few years back, my wife and I were driving through New Mexico hmm. and um, we went to Roswell. And, oh, you uh, get there. I haven't gone there yet. Yeah. As we pulled into Roswell, because we it was we were driving through Roswell to get to where we needed to go. I may have driven a little out of my way to make sure that I got there, uh, yeah. but but like I <laughs> I went to the Roswell Museum, the Alien Museum, and my I looked at my wife. I'm like, "You want to go with me?" She's like, "No, no, <laughs> I'm good." And I'm like, "I'll see you back in a few minutes. You just sit right here." Didi, you've had the opportunity over the years to have some guest spots on some pretty amazing shows uh, like Friends, Seinfeld, ER, Supernatural, that just to name a few. We could go on and on. Your, IMD, your IMDb list is, is pretty impressive. But is there one of these shows or maybe one that isn't shown on your IMDb list? Because as we've come to find out over, over the course of not only this show, but our other podcast called the Funny Science Fiction Podcast, we've come to realize that IMDb is not infallible. But... <laughs> Do you feel that there's one of these shows that is a, a great representation of who and what you are and, and your acting abilities or that you would just want other people to know about that maybe has been overlooked? Yeah, you know, you do these like little independent, you know, films that generally don't see the day of light or that many people. And it's sad because so many people gave their blood, tears, sweat mm -hmm. you know, for no money to for the art of it. And I would have to say there was a film I did called The Tub, The Tub. Okay. Um, yeah, that one, um, it's a short film actually. And, um, written by a friend of mine and it was filmed and written back in the day before the topic was even talked about. People were not talking about suicide back then. Oh, so okay. she wrote it way ahead of her time and it's done it with, uh, a lot of different lenses. It's just, but it was a great film. Yeah. And I, I, we did a lot of work. I gave everything I had to it. I'd say the tub. All right. Excellent. Awesome. Already looking it up. <laughs> yeah, I'll be checking that out. Can you get it out there? That's what I'm looking at. It doesn't look like I can watch it anywhere. Oh, shoot. Okay, let's try again. How about... <laughs> well, no, if you get enough people, if you get enough people searching for it, then yeah. somebody's bound to put it up where you can say, where we can look exactly. at it. Exactly. How about Vamp? Vamp is a classic black comedy I have a cult following like nobody's business that loves Vamp. Grace Jones, Chris Makepeace, Getty Watanabe, Robert Ressler, Sandy Barron. Okay. Yeah, it's people who, it's so dated, but it's so, it's a black comedy. And it's it's good though. It's like one of those silly black comedies back in the 90s that uh, it was my very first starring role too. Ooh. You know, sometimes though, the, the dated stuff is still the fun stuff. It's just, you, you know, you can you know, you, if you look at it in context, you're able to look past how dated something is and you can enjoy it for the work that it is, not yeah. for the time period it was it was made. And it was dated fun. And it was Richard Wang who wrote and produced it and directed it. He um, did something at the time they weren't really doing at the, at the time of the filmmaking. So it's really special. And like I said, it's my very first starring role. So it's like Amaretto, my character's like my baby <laughs> before nice. I had a baby, <laughs> two babies. Right. So you've got some pretty cool acting roles, but then you took some time off from Hollywood yeah. to focus yeah. on your family, on your sons. And in that, pro in that time period, you also got your master's degree in social work 
and your bachelor's in psychology. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, I took time off to go to school. I thought going to get a degree because I'd never been to college. I graduated in 1982. I think if you do the math, there was no computer, no cell phones. There were right. dinosaurs and all sorts of stuff running around. And I was in a variable credit system, three-year brand new high school that didn't work. So they just shoved us through the process. So I did not have a really great education. So when I decided to take some time off to get my degree so I could help people on a, on a different, on a larger scale, because mm-hmm. um, I'd always volunteered, I wanted to do something more. Um, I thought getting a degree was like <laughs> going and I don't know what I thought, but I had, I had no idea what I was doing. And that's why it took me 10 years, <laughs> 10 years, because when I tested, they were like, this woman doesn't understand why it's two plus X equals five. I said, why w- there's an X in there. That's a typo. They're like, no, it's called algebra. I said, no, it's a typo. <laughs> they're like, oh Jesus. You know, I, oh, that's a typo. That's that typo. And they're like, oh, so I had no idea how to write anything like a thesis statement, none of that stuff. Um, so I had to do a ton of prerequisites. I had two boys in tow, kids. So I couldn't do full credits the whole time. Mm-hmm. And what I thought was going to take me like a year took 10 years. But I also took a year off in my master's at UCLA to get sober. I took a year off because I had to acknowledge that I had an addiction and, it, and I needed to address it. So I went to rehab and I'm three plus years sober. Awesome. And thank you. I'm an advocate for having the conversation about addiction. You know, yeah. I'm not a bad person because I had a disease, you know, right. I was a Absolutely. sad person when my, it was in my disease and I was very fortunate enough that I hit my bottom before I went to the light. A lot of people I know it, it don't make it to recovery. Right. You know? And yeah. and it's, it's sad that that's still such a taboo subject when we're trying so hard to make mental health be a real conversation. That's right. That so many people are like, oh, it's just mental health. It's like, no, that's an illness in your brain. Yeah. A brain illness should be treated the same as any other body system illness. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Absolutely. My area so, of concentration was mental health, substance use, uh, and then uh, those experiencing homelessness. Um, is that's a awesome. Worker. I didn't work with children because I'm too much of a mama bear. <laughs> you know, the, yeah. so in addition to this show in funny science fiction, I also host another show called Focused on Forward, which talks about people overcoming obstacles and challenges in their life. We talk hey, a lot have about- me on. Let's go. Let's have the conversation. Hey. I, yeah, yeah, I would love to have you on that's awesome. and talk about that. But we, we, that, that's one of the topics we talk about is people overcoming addictions and, and things like that and helping to break the stigma around it because it's such an important topic to discuss because- you know, and one of the things I had to learn in my life, and, and although I've never struggled with addiction, I've struggled with other mental health issues and, and things along the way. Mm-hmm. One of the things I've had to learn, and I, I want other people to learn about this topic and about other topics where we overcome things, is that it doesn't matter that you fell. It matters that you get up. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, and, and I think that if that's, if that's the message we could convey, then it makes the stigma around these topics get smaller and smaller mm-hmm. and smaller, where it's yeah. no longer a taboo subject to discuss. Absolutely. I also think just, you know, education too. We don't understand, most people don't understand, like you were talking about addiction. We'd like to say you go to rehab, you, you get sober, and then that's it. And then you're on your, your path. That's not everybody's journey. Mm-hmm. Some people have to relapse as part of their journey to get there. And then those around lose hope right? And mm-hmm. then air spirals, the rabbit hole of uh, the support group, you know, the whole thing. It's really complicated and very noisy. But yet, I think once we can simplify that in the sense to just educate people, and at the end of the day, just have compassion for the fact that if anyone, I always say, no one wakes up in the morning and says, hey, I think I want to be homeless. Or hey, I think I want mental health issues. Or hey, I want to be an addict. Who in the heck wakes up in the morning and says they want that in their life? So if you first, right. we can realize that these are not options. Why can't you just stop drinking? Why can't he just like be happy? Why can't it's like, well, honey, if they could, they would. And what would make him or her happy if there's something else going on underlying and that's preventing that that's what needs to be looked at, not their inability, because nobody chooses to be these things that makes your life better, you know, agreed. Yeah. Oh, and again, having conversations about it. And also like this, for me, it's a social stigma. I'll go on the set. Hey, nice to meet you, DD Fiverr. How are you? How are you doing? I'm sober. And they're like, whoa, that's a lot of information. I'm like, yeah, because we have to have a conversation and now you know who you're talking to, right? I have people come up to me and go, hey, I'm 15 years sober. Or hey, I'm 35 years sober. 
you know, or my mom, my mom, she used to do meth and now, you know, she's in recovery for eight years. You know what I say? Hey, why are you whispering? Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I want people to, to celebrate that. Proud, right. Right. That should be a huge success, but yet we're still whispering because that yeah. says there's still some shame around it that we're keeping it on the DL. And that's why right. I'm like, I'm going to go the other way, <laughs> you know, exactly. You know, with your work you don't have to with your stories right but i will to make you feel like you're less alone and i think that's awesome i i wish that more people had that attitude when we talk about um you know whether it's it's mental illness whether it's addiction whether it's the taboo around the the, the topic of suicide and and people taking their lives and why why it's why it happens and because they're afraid to talk about yeah that topic the you taboo know. that gets me the most is miscarriages and infant loss too the number of people yeah. who were like, oh, it's just, you were only eight weeks pregnant. You were only, that, that doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't matter at all. I think that seems to be the normal thing is that people project their narrative onto other people as mm-hmm. if Absolutely. that's their reality. And I also think that that can, we can be educated on that. Your journey might be eight weeks doesn't mean anything to you. That's okay. I don't judge you. But for me, it meant a lot. Leave space for both. And right. I think that's something that I think we all can probably learn a little bit more in life, I think, mm-hmm. versus projecting my narrative into everybody else, right? No, I, I agree. I think that many times in life that we're too focused on, and I, I say we as a generality, um, we're too focused on, on our own little box and what, what we think fits into that own, our own little box, instead of considering the, the considerations of other people's lives and, and things that are going on. And oh, so absolutely. how much how much nicer it would be that, that, like you said, where we can accept what's going on in somebody else's life and the circumstances that they've had to overcome. So what, yeah, I wish that more people had that, that viewpoint. So. Well, I think that what happens is we have this, this idea that if like, if I leave room for you to be different than me, I'm annihilated. Everything that I believe in is gone. And that's not true. I no. can have my beliefs, have my feelings, have my narrative, but leave room for you and your narrative and your reality and things that might be different than me. How about leaving for both? But we have a tendency to be like all or nothing. It's my way or your way. That's, <laughs> that's not the way the world works. No. Right. So no, it's not. So uh, Dee, Dee, one of the things I love about when we talk to people is, is understanding their backstories and, you know, things that lead them. And, and we just got a little bit more information about your backstory and that that's, always very cool to me to be able to understand what people have done, uh, you know, what got them from where they are to the work that they're doing now. Now, mm-hmm. so one of the things that I did read about you on the interwebs uh, was that in your past, you've, let's see, you've delivered radiators, you were a dancer in Disneyland parades, you were a cocktail waitress, and it said you dressed as a monkey, but I don't know if those were necessarily <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, um, I have the monkey suit at the radiator company delivering radiators. Those were separate. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> Very but good. Now I want to imagine somebody in a radi- in a monkey <laughs> suit delivering right? radiators. But so as you were going <laughs> through all these before. these various jobs, yeah. Uh, as you were going through all these, <laughs> as you were going through all these various jobs, what helped you keep your focus as you were moving forward to your ultimate goal until you got the break that you needed to be Dee Dee Pfeiffer actress? Well. If you think about it, when I was working as a kid, I was working as a kid because we wanted something, we had to earn it. You know, that was just how we were raised. Child labor was not even like a thing. Kids worked all the time. (laughs) We just worked. Right. It was totally illegal, but we did it anyways. Because if I want that, those pair of dittos at the mall, you guys don't even know what dittos are. Anyways, dittos were very cool back then. Um, Then I had to go do work some job to make money to get the dittos. I mean, that's just the way it was, right? Weren't they shoes? <laughs> no, but those were um earth oh, shoes. Okay. We had earth shoes. If anyone's older, they know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm totally dating myself. Um, but anyway, so I just worked because I wanted stuff that my parents couldn't afford, you know. So that's how I worked all these weird jobs. But then all of a sudden I decided um it was just to survive, right? And then all of a sudden, my sister, I was 18, my sister was doing Scarface and at this point, I had numerous jobs, like you were talking about. I worked at a radiator company, delivering radiators, um, floral. I was a bus girl with a little, <laughs> I don't know, a little uh, Mexican food restaurant. So I had a little like tutu thing and mm-hmm. on my bicycle riding a beach boulevard, totally illegally doing that. I worked <laughs> illegally as a cocktail waitress at a female oil and mud wrestler. 
and I was a monkey on the D Disneyland float. Yeah, I did everything. I, I did twenty fifth anniversary parade in Disneyland. M wait, mud yeah. wrestling? What? Oh, let me back up. Uh, in LA, there used to be a place called the Hollywood Tropicana. Again, I'm dating okay. myself. There was oil, female oil and mud wrestling, literally. So of course it was the male people. Would right. come and I was an illegal cocktail waitress in that back then they didn't ask for my ID. I was making <laughs> good money. Um, yeah, imagine. Yeah, I made some good money. Uh, that's where I got my little edge too. Cause I was really like, hi, I see Dee Dee in there. And they would like goose you and I'd have to kick them. <laughs> <laughs> I had like beer. <laughs> oh goodness! Um, yeah, that was crazy. But after all these jobs, they were just to survive. And then my sister, like I said, she was in Scarface. I said, "Hey, I think I want to try acting like you." And she's like, "Okay, stop right there. Stop. Don't think about a headship. Don't think about an agent. Just get into an acting workshop." So, um, loaded up my Volkswagen, my 1966 Volkswagen, drove to LA, lived on my sister's couch in her office for a minute and um started acting workshop and boy was i bad i didn't know what to do. <laughs> i had no right i stuttered i went up on my lines i couldn't remember anything i didn't know character study and i know they were thinking what is she doing why is she here she's so bad and i was like i'm not gonna quit until i can figure it out well i'm 57 and i still haven't figured it out so I like well, my you still haven't quit yet then well your career would yeah, say I otherwise didn't... Yeah, in the 10 years, I didn't really quit. I just went to school, raising my two kids and, and getting sober and all that kind of stuff, getting my degrees, being in the field with um, people in certain populations, um, social welfare issues and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of like, I think what I really did was colored up my palette more. And now um, as an actor, and I'm able to bring a lot of that to Denise, which is super fun. Well, okay. I think you're, I think you're, you're, uh... Uh, acting resume says that you figured it out. I think you. I think that if you figure it out as an artist, then you're done. Because as an artist, you have to continue evolving and learning oh, and sure. expressing, right? And because the world, like right now, we're here, but in 10 minutes, everything's going to change and it's going to continue to change. So if we don't evolve as artists, then you get stuck and the world's going to go on without you. Right. So I think mm -hmm. that that's kind of important because once I think that I've got the answers, I'm not growing anymore. You know, I'm not no, very true. I'm looking at life with resistance. Look at that versus curiosity. Mm. Right. Resistance, curiosity. I like that. I like right. That. Different that's I use it in sobriety. <laughs> <laughs> I have all the answers. You don't know me. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a very simple illustration, but very fitting. I like it. Yeah, and when you find yourself doing this, stop and, and change that lens and go, wait a minute, I'm sorry, what was that again? Right, I like yeah. that yeah. a lot. Yeah, that's oh, very good. I like that. So I have a 14 year old, I'm gonna use it on later. All right. <laughs> I have a 16 year old in the other room. I, he's just like, oh, she's just yapping. <laughs> I get over. that. <laughs> I drug his butt to New Mexico. He's like over <laughs> me. <laughs> so you mentioned that your sister recommended, suggested, whatever, however you want to word it, for you to take acting classes, to go yeah. to a, to learn to be an actor if you really wanted to do that. Yeah, yeah. So there is always that trial and error when you start a new job. So do you have favorite lessons from your early days of acting? Not from your classes, but like stuff you actually learned on set. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think the word fluid, mm -hmm. fluid, fluidity, fluid meaning go with the flow. <laughs> It's people like to think that acting is like an I, I. And I think that when actors or even crew people view it as an I, that's when you're, you're gonna be going up against the process of the collaboration of a group. Unless you're one woman, man, they person filming yourself, lighting yourself, you know, doing everything yourself, which is, that's a whole one man show. So fluid working with people. Mm -hmm. right? It's like a multidisciplinary team in the field, right? Everybody has their forte. Everyone has their specialty, but you do have to work with each other and you blend together, right? And, it, and a movie set is the same thing, right? You have actors who are acting and people who are doing camera and makeup and hair and what have you. You all have to work together. So, I, and, and things will change and they'll change quickly and on the spot. So being fluid is important versus bamboo is better than an old wooden stick, you know, you're going right. to snap. <laughs> so 
because things change. So if you don't like change, I don't think you should be in this field because like I said, actors get paid to wait and we act for free. Mm-hmm. That's good. Seriously, we really wait a lot. You get, you know, you wait a lot. And it's funny, I hear a lot of actors complaining about waiting or I flew there and they didn't work me for another week. And, and I'm like, uh-huh. And that's what they're paying you for is to wait. You act for free. Because remember the there you actor, go. Is the artistry of it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the waiting is just part of getting a whole bunch of people together to try to create one thing. <laughs> sure <laughs> no, that makes sense change right yeah so i think fluidity and just kind of going with it learn how to be bamboo no i think yeah. that's really good advice and i think that's something you can apply to so many different things in life just learning to go with the flow that's yeah. a that's a multi-level lesson yeah so all right Dee, Dee we have just one last question for you okay hit me and we like to call this our silly question because Uh, There's no wrong answer. You can be as serious or silly as you like to be with the answer. Okay. All right. Today's silly question for D.D. Pfeiffer is, is cereal soup? Why or why not? Well, I'm going to say, now I'm going to get put my UCLA cap on, critical thinking. No, let me explain to you why. Because cereal has a word and a definition and soup has a word and a definition. If they were the same thing, there'd be one word for both, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what? other word in other words they're two things so why they if they're if they're the same thing they'd have one word it'd be like how would you put soup and cereal together and make one word so uh, cereal cereal soup thank you that would be the word for both okay for so two words they're two different things you can make your cereal soupy by putting a lot of milk in it right mm-hmm. and you can make your soup Crunchy by putting some crunchy things, hefty, in it. hefty crunch in it and granola, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say they're two different things for sure. Yeah. That would be my defense. I mean, my UCLA professors would say, wow, that was a pretty lame defense. You lost that case. Moving on. But it worked. <laughs> You've convinced me. It works. Me. That's right. It's your answer. We're not judging it either way. So <laughs> it's my answer. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> there you go. Very good. You know, Dee Dee, we have enjoyed talking to you so much today. We would like to link all of your social medias, all that stuff. So where can our viewers and our listeners go so that they can find you and find out about the work that you're doing and what you've got coming out? Well, thank you. I don't really know what I'm doing with social media. I got it when I got Big Sky. My my boys were mortified at the thought that their mother is going to actually be on Instagram. <laughs> um, they're like, oh, no please mom, don't be one of those people who gets all like on their soapbox. So my Instagram is DD Pfeiffer official. I don't do Twitter or Facebook because I don't even know how I can barely do Instagram. And you'll see all the big sky promos on there. And I do a lot of my rescued animal pictures. I have a cockatoo who's rescued. She's hugely famous. She's Panny. Literally all my followers are like, how's Panny today? Did she have coffee today? Because the cockatoo drinks coffee with me. That's awesome. Yeah, she's nuts. The cockatoo's nuts. She's very famous. She's more famous than I am. Um, and I have a new pet, like I said, pandemic pup. Um, and then there's the cat who looks like an orb. And then there's the Rottweiler who snores. And That's yeah. Fantastic. And you I'm pretty sure them. though that pets are, or pets are really what the internet was created for. Honestly, I, I follow like all pet things and yeah. I, <laughs> and I put them on my story all the time. And it's so funny because I know some people are like, oh, is she going to like talk about big sky this week? I'm like, oh, yeah, shoot. I have to do that. Cause I'm blasting all these really, uh, these little clips of animals or what have you that, mm-hmm. that I like to call produce more dopamine and serotonin in the brain. Oh, they're, yeah. they're good, good shots of feelings, you know, um, for free. You need those serotonin posts. You do. And I, I love them. I can get lost in them for like a half an hour. I'm like, Oh God, I gotta go do laundry and f- feed my son. And you know, I went from not knowing anything to my face watching all of these animal things for like a long time. And I, you, you should join TikTok partially to embarrass your son and partially to share more videos of your pets. But I let's not sleep on the embarrassing the, the child part. Cause that's the fun part. Yeah, yeah. As a dad of three, I live to embarrass my children. It's, it's, <laughs> well, it's an everyday passion. You know that my boys don't watch my show. And I'm like, can you please watch it so you can tell me, you know, if you like, they're like, no, they tried watching it for a, the first episode. And the minute I came on screen, they shut it off. And they said it was just too weird. They were like, I, 
I'm not watching you, mom. I'm, I can't. <laughs> guess what? One of them won't follow me on Instagram and I'm not allowed to follow him back. Oh, of course not. Yeah. yeah. He said, mom, Teenagers. mothers don't follow their kids on Instagram. That's gross. I said, oh, excuse me. So my mom I, follows me on Instagram. Well, my, according to my son, that's gross. <laughs> well, yeah, that was a house a rule. Teenager. That was a house rule at our house. If you were a kid in my house, you had a, a social media account. I had to be one of your friends. That's the well, way it works. Don't tell them. My family, my sisters, and my best friends follow them. So don't think I don't know what they're doing. Right. There you go. Exactly. Right. You got your they're not out there being stupid because yeah. mama, mama's not following you, but mama has friends. That's right. <laughs> mama's got spies. There's, there's, there's more than one way to cook a stew. <laughs> exactly. Also, my boys are not really like into social media that much. They just kind of do stuff for their friends. They're pretty harmless. And, you know, and I'm harmless because I think it can be really kind of, um, it could be a scary yeah. place. It can. And that's why I was like, uh, do I have to do social media? People can be mean. And my publicist is like, we'll do this. We'll do something really soft and nice for you, Dita. I said, yeah, because I don't want to be part of the problem anymore in the world. I want to be part of the solution. And that means spread some love, some harmony and some animal videos and get those Friday go. afternoon dopamine hits. Right. Definitely. There you go. Yeah. Well, we will definitely link your Instagram in our video description so that our viewers and listeners can go and find out more about your pets and you <laughs> and big sky and yeah, we can put a big sky link coffee. we can put a big sky link in there too that way they can find the show Absolutely. on abc thank you and go watch the first season on hulu all right yeah. so we're gonna mind everybody if you haven't done it already right now is the prime and most opportune time to smash that subscribe button uh this is the single most important thing that you can do to help pop culture addicts continue to get amazing guests like dd pfeiffer here today and have these great and very enjoyable conversations so please subscribe it helps us more than we can really ever describe and remember kids pop culture it's all around you it influences every single part of our life everything that we do so be sure to come back next week we'll have your fix waiting right here for you on Pop Culture Addicts. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to Pop Culture Addicts. If you're interested in being a guest on a future episode of Pop Culture Addicts, you can reach us on either Instagram or Twitter by using the handle at PCA Pod Show. You can also email us at PCA Pod Show at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Copyright 2021 Pop Culture Addicts. Reference to any specific product or entity mentioned on this podcast does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation of by Pop Culture Addicts or any of its sponsors. The views expressed by guests are their own and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity that they represent. If you have any questions about this disclaimer, please contact us via email at pcapodshow at gmail.com.